Hey guys, how's it going? So, I picked up this game from the Steam sale. It's uh, Civilization V. It is probably one of the best games I've ever played. Mainly because I really like the strategy aspect of it. It's just really fun. If you're kind of into like strategy games and kind of major multitasking and all that good stuff, then you should really pick this up. It's, uh, I think it's still on sale. Because there's the Encore sale that's going on for the next few hours. And, uh, yeah, it's on sale for $7.50, but I highly recommend getting the Gold Edition. It's only an extra couple bucks. I think it's like, uh, $12.50. So, yeah. I just thought I'd play a game. Praises upon her serene highness. And, uh, see how well I can do. You lead and protect the celebrated maritime nation. Oh my god, who am I playing as? Elizabeth? Oh, let's just... You want some tea? Years ago, oh my god, I don't want to listen to this. Waves of invaders, each oh, I don't want to listen to this. I don't want to listen to this. Okay, there we go. <clears throat> okay, so how it kind of starts off is you can start with a group of settlers and then a warrior unit. So, what you want to start off by is like find a, a viable source of like for example here there's um, some deer here so I can make a camp there's some more jungle here you want to find a place with a decent amount of resources to start your city so that's what settlers do like as you can see I can find the city right here now if I want but I just want to explore a little more maybe just with this oh that's a good spot maybe I don't know <clears throat> ah, okay and it also works in turns. At first, this kind of turned me off to the game, but I actually kind of like it. It's it's kind of like, because when you have an empire that's so big and so large eventually, it's like you need these ordered turns. It's like, without it, it kind of go to chaos, like, you know, so, yeah, hold on, uh, you go up. Oh, yeah, see, that's the perfect spot right there. Yeah. <clears throat> There's a uh, ancient ruins. And when you step on this, you get something. I'm not sure what, but sometimes you can get upgraded weapons. Sometimes you just get XP or gold. Ruins explored. Evidence of recent activity reveals location of nearby barbarian encampments. Oh, that's just lovely. Are they far? Okay, good. They're far. Okay. But, I will keep an eye on those. So, what you do is, once you find a spot, um, <clears throat> I'll probably start there. Oh, but it's out of moves. Whatever. Okay, just next turn. Once you find a spot, you just select your settler, and uh, you click found, uh, found city, basically. This order causes the settler to found a city in, this current lo in its current location. The settler is consumed in the process. Alright, yeah. So you click it, and bada bing bada boom. Ooh, London. Nice. So, as. Oh, never mind. Hold on a sec. Cutscene. <laughs> okay. We are most pleased and honored to meet the great leader and warlord. He's neutral, okay. I kind of like the cutscenes too. This only happens in single player, I think. When I play multiplayer, I don't get these kind of cutscenes. Yeah, I don't really want to discuss anything with you, so peace out, homie. Um, stick my warrior on this side because I just want to make sure that in case the barbarians come from this side here, I don't want any... Oh, is that barbar... No, that's Japanese, sorry. Um, okay, so I have my city and what... This little star right here, as I was saying before the cutscene, this little star here means that it's your capital city. Your capital city is the city that, it'll be your main city of course because it's the first founded city. So it means that it's your first founded city and it's your main city. That's what that little silver star means. And then what you want to do, it'll tell you choose production. And what this means is that you can produce things within your cities here. And for example it's nice because it shows you how many turns it'll take to get the certain amount of like whatever you need to make a certain unit or building or wonder so like for example this monument here it costs okay I'll, I'll go over these <clears throat> so this is food food as you can see here 
it you need it to acquire new citizens and citizens are good because they work the land to collect more food and production and gold so on that top same topic here this is production and what production does it determines how fast city can build units it says right there buildings etc and as you can see it is collected from the train buildings and more so yeah and this is science and what science is used for it's used to discover new technologies and I'll go over that in a second this is gold and that's basically self-explanatory it's currency that's used to purchase stuff you can use it later on to bribe people you can use it later on <coughs> sorry excuse me to um, bribe people you can give gifts to gain friends allies it's there's a lot involved there this is culture culture is used for like expansion of your borders and the more culture that you have the faster that your border is gonna grow as you can see there it says I'm um, 0 to 15 towards a border growth so that's 15 turns and uh, that's because I'm only making um, one culture per turn and here this is something new like you need gold edition if you don't have gold edition then you're not gonna have this because you don't get the expansions and this is faith and faith as you can see, faith is spent on founding and improving religions at the empire level. Faith can also be expe expended to purchase missionaries, inquisitors, and uh, religious buildings. So this is also important too. Well, it depends. At first, you're going to want to be religious, but later on, you know, I'll go over policies. Policies, these are certain things you get also through culture. So when you get enough culture, you can adopt a policy. Can I adopt a policy right now? No, sorry, I can't. But as you can see, there's different things here, like uh, liberty. Liberty is best for civilization with desire rapid expansion. Once you get enough culture, if you adopt this, for example, it will provide one culture for every city you own. So, for example, if I don't know, I have four or five cities, it'll provide plus four or five culture. Uh, <clears throat> same here, this is more along military lines. Honor. And honor improves the effectiveness of one's army in a variety of ways so this is more based upon military and I'll get into this later I don't need to right now but um, yeah so <clears throat> I need to choose a production and also you have economic advisors so hold on let's see they basically kinda help you and they, they are very helpful you should take the recommendations if you're a beginner because I am kind of a beginner myself still so I still use this but I still have like I have there's a setting to show how much help you get and I have an unexperienced player because I don't know, I've been playing for me I've played maybe a total of 30 hours and I'm kind of getting the hang of it so yeah so get this started here build a monument and the monument increases the culture of a city speeding the growth of the city's territory and civilization's acquisition of social policies so a monument's very helpful to start out so and I'll, oh yeah okay so this is it's, it'll say choose research and this is where science comes in because once you get enough science you can research something so for me since I have two possible mine shafts here or just mines I'm gonna start mining now it's gonna take nine turns to get enough science which is all right it's a good amount so no oh, Japanese what are you what are you doing okay so the warriors also Hold on a sec. Uh, wake this unit. So you have different things here. So there's attack, move mode. So this is moving. But for moving, you can hold right click and then just go like here and then click and then release your right mouse button when you have it on the position they want to move to. Also, as you can see, there's a little blue border. And what this border means is like that's the like amount of moves that you can possibly go. Like you can't go any farther than the border because that'll use up all your moves. As you can see after this, it's, the path goes from blue to yellow. And that means that I cannot go there. So, But I'm going to keep them here. So there's move mode, do nothing, self-explanatory. And then there's alert. Alert, I like this because then you don't have to click like do nothing every time or something. And what this does is that it puts it to sleep but the unit will awake upon seeing an enemy. Like they'll sit there and they, and they do this baller ass stance and uh, they just sit there until they see an enemy basically so yeah <coughs> oh 
Oh, next turn. So basically, I'm just kind of going through the turns here. Not much to do right now. Just... Turns usually don't go this quick just because it's the beginning. I don't have much to do. Just waiting. As you can see, this number here keeps decreasing because that's the amount of turns I have left until I get the monument, which is three. So I'm kind of waiting out on that. Oh yeah, also here, this is how much gold you're making per turn. This is plus four. I've gotten as high personally as over 400, and I think that's pretty good. I've looked at a lot of Civ videos for Civilization V, and I haven't seen, I've seen a lot like at 100, 200, but I was making over 400. Like, I might do a video later on, like I can show you it. I'm not, I don't think I'm making that much right now. I think I'm making maybe in the 300 something, 350, 360, kind of around that, but I can show that later maybe oh yeah also this is your happiness right here so my total happiness right now is 10 and it also shows where unhappiness is generated so if you start having unhappiness you can kind of start to see why and as you can see it says at the bottom happiness is necessary to keep your cities growing and it is used to counter unhappiness that's kind of self-explanatory oh yeah also here this little thing here this is the kind of like the countdown kind of like the meter until you get to a golden age and what a golden age is is it increases your gold by a fuck ton like at first it kind of doesn't it doesn't increase it as much in the early stages of your city but as you go later on like I might be making a hundred gold it might and then with a golden age it can over double it can sometimes triple it like it can get pretty extreme but golden ages are helpful if you're in debt sometimes a lot of the times I found that I've gone into debt is because of too many units because if you look at units they have something called unit maintenance so for example oh no let me see uh, no. Well, but for like, for example, for um, a lot of military units, they'll have maintenance, and same with buildings, and like, it'll, for example, for some units, let's just say it costs, for unit maintenance, three gold a turn, that kind of thing, so, for example, for a certain military unit later on, it's like, okay, you need to pay up three gold a turn to use this, right, and a lot of times, if you get rid of a lot of units, um, you can easily get yourself out of debt so that's a good thing so never get too many units unless your economy is strong enough make sure your economy is strong enough first uh, should I go? no I'll go make a scout what am I saying I don't need another warrior right now <coughs> uh, archery yeah I'll go for archery um, okay uh, Huh, why is it showing the warrior? He's supposed to just be alert, but okay, I'll just... Okay, so now I'm just waiting for a scout, and scouts are good. Okay, here we go, I can adopt my first policy. Go back to the scout in a second. So, depending on my situation, I like to do different things, and... I think I might go with honor first, I'm not sure. Because honor is good because adopting as you can see here it says it gives a plus 33% combat bonus versus barbarians and I find this helpful in early game so you know if I decide to go over here or maybe they, they bring some units over here you know to attack my city you know I'll have quite a bit of an upper hand technically speaking but liberty and tradition are also good because this one increase this for rapid expansion this one increases your border by a bit and it also grants three culture in your capital so that's kind of nice also with um, what are they called with social policies um, with if you adopt like all of the little ones in like a tree with in a, in a policy tree you get like an additional kind of kind of like a kind of like a tribute or something like you get another feature like for example for example in Liberty it says adopting all the policies in the Liberty tree will grant a free great person of your choice near the capital 
Um, if you don't know what that is, I'll go over it later as I go through the playthrough here when I get one. So, so I'm trying to think. Liberty, honor. Uh, I think I might go for honor because I don't. If also barbarians, you need to watch out because when you make a worker, because they can capture your workers, and the only way to get them back is to go and kill their encampment, and sometimes that can put you back a couple turns. I know I get pissed off when it happens. As you can see, a little part of the border already expanded here. <clears throat> oh, next turn. Okay, just about here. Oh, Lord Darius the First of Persia. I graciously greet you and generously offer you my hand in friendship. Oh, yeah, cool. I am Darius, leader of Persia, and I am an extremely wise and remarkable man. Oh, of course, yeah, because everyone just calls himself wise and remarkable. Fucking cocky little shit fucker. Okay, uh, discuss. Let's go for a declaration of friendship. Nope. Okay, well then, lick my balls. Okay. Oh, somebody already found a pantheon. God damn it. Pantheon's kind of like a religion. I'll go over that later. Um, okay, so I have a scout. And scouts, they're good because... Okay. If you see forests here, like... Okay. If I try and move over here, I can move two steps. But you think I'd be able to move two steps here. But, like, if I go through the forest it decreases like my movement speed by half so when you're going through things such as um, jungles and hills mountains all that you, it decreases your movement speed by half so you can only move one per turn with something with a two movement speed for example in the jungle but if you're going just on flat land you can go two per turn right but what's good about the scout is that it they ignore this feature and they can go through anything as you can see I can move two paces right so here I can only move one but the scout ignores this and he can go two this way so I'm probably gonna go look at the encampment oh there's some ruins it's cool the next turn oh I think the Japanese are gonna go take the encampment oh nice Oh yeah, see, so one of the things sometimes you can get is sometimes your unit uh, equips itself with advanced weapons. Oh, so now, just that quickly, I have archers. Oh, that's actually kind of cool. Okay, <coughs> you know what? Yeah, I'll go for these guys. I can get them. Archers are OP. As you can see, just... They mangle the shit out of these guys. Mm. Okay, next turn. Nice, so I've researched a new technology, so I've gotten archery. And archery allows me to build archers. But it's funny, <laughs> I got an archer before I even had the thing because I found ruins, but... It's all good. Attack these guys again. Pachara. Cool stuff. So now I can choose a new research. Now, animal husbandry. Oh, I have an elephant. Yeah. Well, that's for trapping, though. So here they have recommendations. But for me, I'm not doing animal husbandry because, as you can see, besides the elephant that's used for trapping, there are no deer or cow that I'm going to get anytime soon. It's going to take a while for the border to expand that large. So I'm most likely going to go with my economic advisor's recommendation for pottery, which allows my cities to build a granary, which, or granary, I think. I think it's granary, which provides food, helping your cities grow larger. Also allows you to build a shrine, the first uh, faith-producing building in the game. So that's nice, too. So I can get my faith, uh, faith kind of starting to build. So you're dead. So I'm going to move in and take the encampment next turn. Well, I'll... Yeah, it's going to take two turns to actually start attacking. Oh, no! Oh, I found Natural Wonder. So sometimes you're going to find these things, and they're called just Natural Wonders. So this one here... I've never, I don't think I've ever had this. It's called the... 
or Ringer Crater, I think that's how you pronounce it. And so it's congratulations, the discovery of the Ringer Crater has increased happiness in the Empire. So that's nice. And the output, if worked, is two gold and three science. So I've actually never worked a natural wonder because I guess I'd need to build a town here. So I might do that later on. So that'd be kind of nice. So as you can see here, starting to rape these guys over there. Oh, I can get another policy that quickly. I will definitely... I will go with tradition first because I have a smaller city right now. I'm doing good so far. Six cultures, not that bad. Next turn. Okay, attack these guys again. I think I can get them in one more turn. Ah, uh, it might be one or two more turns. I think two more. Uh, I might take a total of three turns to actually take the encampment because you also need one more turn to actually walk your men in. So six turns until I get workers and I can start. Oh, unit promotion. So for like, you'll start getting XP for your units and there'll be a lot of attributes. For increasing this so there'll be different policies different buildings you can create kind of like barracks military buildings and all this will increase the amount of XP that you get per kill per hit whatever it is measured by for your like your different military units so they'll start leveling faster and they'll get these more of these things called unit promotions so here there's barrage one and accuracy one and what barrage one does it'll give uh, it gives plus 15% range combat strength against units in rough terrain so as you can see there in parentheses hills forest or jungle and then it's kind of the opposite for accuracy plus 15% range combat strength but in open terrain so no hills forest or jungles just uh, you know this right here kind of the flat plane so as you can see I'm in kind of like a jungly tile here so I'm gonna put on uh, barrage one and you know what, I might be able to get them this turn because of that uh, unit promotion. And, uh, nope. So close, though. So close. <coughs> uh, uh oh. We got some company down here. Oh, and London has grown. The city of London now has three citizens. So what that means is, like, I'm going to get more food production and gold now. So that's kind of nice. Also, when you're building cities, don't expand too much like you need to be careful you need to like don't start making cities at every opportunity you get because this is going to use up your food your cities will start to starve and your happiness is going to majorly decrease i've done this before and it's it's not very nice it's it could basically be the end of your city what's a unit needs or okay there we go okay so actually it might move me automatically uh, nope. No, it didn't. <clears throat> oh, come on. Okay. Adopt another policy. Definitely liberty. Okay. Oh, I'm going pretty quick here. Choose a research. Now I can research something else. Let's see. Calendar. So that allows workers to construct plantations on many luxury resources, which are extremely important for growth of food and happiness. Okay. Let's see, writing, definitely not writing. So I'm gonna go with the calendar. Actually, yeah, I can make a plantation right here because there's, yeah. As you can see here, it says requires calendar. It's a little bit to the right there in red text in parentheses. So, okay, now I have to start attacking these guys. They should go down a bit quicker because I have that bonus. As you can see, I'm doing a little more damage. I was doing about 27 per turn. I'm doing now like 40 around that. So sometimes you'll get like uh, a list, for example, like of kind of like ranks for like, I don't know, score charts. And this one here, most literate people. So, <laughs> okay. Well, I mean, it says I'm at the bottom, but I mean, look at the difference. We're all at four and these guys are at five. So it doesn't really matter early game. It's funny because my current other game, it has a list that comes up every now and then and it's called people with the pointiest stick. <laughs> and what this means is that like people with the most military and I think mine is at 47,000 and the second lowest to that I think is like 5,000 or something so I'm basically a god in my other game and I just finished taking Berlin like I was up like for 
10 hours and the fucker just wouldn't die and eventually I took over Germany and the capital was hard because they have these defense cannons and it was like oh my lord and I had this battleship that had a ranged upgrade so if I just kept uh, hitting them like every turn inland from with my battleship and it was just it was intense and oh my god I was so happy when it and I finished and I beat them so I got my workers now and now as you can see when you move here there's a little logo here but also here it has some recommended stuff so here I can construct a mine and this gives me a plus foot one food and plus one production and it also says there will connect the salt in this tile to the Empire's trade network which is also nice so it also says how many turns so it's gonna take five turns for that to be completed um, give me a second just drink some water <coughs> I get a dry throat easily from talking this much. So as it's it says I should build another settler, but I like to play it safe, so I'd like to do another worker. I'd like to get what I have here fully built before I make any hasty decisions to move on. So as you can see, oh yeah, if you want to clear a barbarian encampment, I made this mistake one time. You need to move your units into the encampment. It, you don't get it automatically just by killing the guys. You need to move in. So as you can see here, barbarian encampment cleared. You have dispersed a uh, villainous barbarian encampment and recovered 40 gold from it. So that's nice. It's a bit of a boost. <laughs> 151 gold. I think I ended up having like 25,000 gold just from like a few turns on my other ones. So pretty cool. Um, okay. Well, I don't know. Where should I move you? Should I do further exploration with you? I don't... Nah, I'll just bring you back. I don't need to go to the other encampment. If they come here, I'll just take them out. I don't need to get them right now. As you can see, my border is actually expanding quite nicely. So that's why I like to get those policies in the beginning. It makes for a quick start. And that's kind of nice. Hmm. <sighs> Okay, next turn. Okay, so I'll just put these guys on alert. And now basically I guess we're just going to go through the turns, waiting for... Oh, okay, so now they're done. So and I also at the same time got a new technology, calendar. So as I said before, I think I did. Allows workers to construct plantations, which is good for growth and happiness, yada yada. So I'll probably bring them over here and and uh, next turn make a uh, plantation and I think that gives gold too, yeah. So yeah, bronze working. I'll go for bronze working. This allows workers to chop jungle, clearing the map tiles so other improvements can be constructed. Also allows you to build spearmen and military units strong against mounted enemies. Okay, next turn. As you can see, my happiness has also increased, so it's at 15. Oh, and I can get another policy. I might get something in Liberty. Oh. oh, I'm still tired because, oh my god, I think I only got like 6 hours of sleep. I was up till 8.30, like this morning. Like, I was up all night and I went to bed at 8.30. And I woke up at like 4 in the afternoon. And I've been up since then, and I'm just so fucking tired. So excuse me if I yawn. Whew. Okay, let's see here. Uh, hmm. ah. Excuse me. Um. Let's see. Citizenship. Yeah, citizenship. This is nice because it uh, increases tile improvement and construction rate by 25%, and a worker automatically appears in my capital. So another worker. So that's nice. So. Now I can build a plantation plus one gold per turn. That's awesome. Go over here, construct a farm plus one food. Awesome. And then in three turns, we'll get another worker. Oh, see, border expansion. It's going quick. So so far, I'm doing. We're doing quite nicely here. Um, have they done the plantation? Have they? Like, did they start? Huh the hell I thought I okay it doesn't matter okay 
So you start constructing a mine. What does that give? Did it say, I think it said plus one gold and plus one production or something. So it wants me to build a settler, but I say nay, I don't want to... Oh, actually, you know... I'm not... Yeah, I'll build a settler. It makes sense, because by the time nine turns comes, I'll be working nicely in my town. <clears throat> uh, aren't they already constructing a mine? Yeah, they're already working, aren't they? Yeah. Leave them be. They're working. Uh, okay, next turn. Oh my god, the steam sale. So many games. You have to be careful not to buy too many because uh, it'll it'll kill your wallet. Buy games that you're actually going to play. Like, just really think before you buy something. Oh, nice. Shit, is that silver? Yeah, that's silver. I'm pretty sure that's silver. Awesome. Yeah, these guys, these guys are done. So we can move over here. Move over here. Go back to alert. Next turn. Okay, so now I have bronze working. Allows workers to chop jungle. That's nice because it clears map pile for other improvements. And uh, can build spearmen. Personally, I don't really build spearmen. It's just my choice, so. My personal choice, you know. I might do trapping. Yeah, here we go. Speaking. Oh, yeah, research is done. Uh. Oh, trapping isn't even listed. Might have to do animal husbandry first. Huh. I don't know if I could do masonry. Uh, I'll, I'll do animal husbandry. I'll need it eventually. And I think I need animal husbandry to get trapping. You know what? I can, you can actually track, check the tree. Yeah, see. So as you can see here, there's a tree. Gold means you, it's what you already have researched, and then you've got currently researching, and then you have green for available to research, and then black, and just black is uh, not yet available. So I'm currently researching animal husbandry for the next four turns, and then next I can get trapping, so that's good. Also you have the different eras here. As you can see, look, how, look at like all the stuff that you start getting. You get nuclear fission. Nanotechnology stealth. I think I'm in. I'm in. I am in the atomic era right now. That's the farthest I've gone. I am almost in the information era. So as you can see, it goes all the way up to modern times. Satellites. Oh, even more robotics, lasers, computers, rocketry, like all this stuff. So that's why I love about this game too, you know, you start in the ancient era and you're going all the way up to modern times and even the future. Look at this. This I think it's a repeatable tech that you can keep getting. And all it says is who knows what the future holds. Like that's that's pretty awesome. That's what I like about this. This this is why I like this game more than Age of Empire. It's just so awesome. <laughs>